Hello there, Evie here, and welcome to the Raid Max X603. First off, this was sent to me by Raid Max after I got in touch with them. Very nice of them to reply, let alone send me a case. So, thanks to them, and that's the disclaimer done. Before we get into this, the coincidence that this case has basically the exact same chassis as the case I just reviewed, the Antec uh, AX90, is surreal. I saw both cases completely separately at different times and I didn't know there was a link of any kind. If you know more about that then please let me know. On that note there will be quite a lot of comparison between the two throughout because it's just hard not to think about it. But now we're into the idle chit chat, let's press on with the video. Kicking off with, well, the unboxing, but more importantly build quality which mainly circles around the exterior. A top tip for avoiding static shock after a case has been in a plastic bag for months on end being transported all around the world, uh, grab a large, well, grab a metal object and tap it against an exposed metal part of the case. Could be a, a screw hole or a screw itself in a hole. Uh, the zap hits the tip of the metal and dissipates across the surface of your hand. It's much less shocking and might stop you from potentially dropping the case while you're moving it around in the bag. Anyway, not making a good use of time there. One weird problem I came across that I don't think you will is this big dent in the Pisa Express slot section. I had no idea what caused this, but turns out that Raid Max also sent me a cooler within the case. Now, while it's nice to get a cooler, who doesn't like to get a cooler for free, it's not great when it's relatively free to rattle inside the case, and despite all the packaging material, smashing up the rear, and having a swing through the front filter towards the front fans. Although that wasn't the front filter, it was a side filter that was shifted there to protect the fans, I think? Now, I'm not 100% sure about the integrity of the cooler after being smashed around and sent from America, but the case bent back into shape quite easily. Anyway, the front looks great to me, I think it'll have some wider appeal too. Believe it or not though, this 3D-ish mesh will increase the free area for the intake, which is great. It's the kind of uh, same thing, I can't remember the word, uh, but it's the kind of same thing that you get on uh, car intake filters, you know circular ones? It's like a... Uh, this is the word on the screen. Anyway, I'm not 100% sure whether this case is a previously well-used review sample or brand new since removing the front panel was so much easier than the AX90, but the clips look heavily used. Color me skeptical. No extra filter to the front, not that it's really needed. That damaged filter seen earlier is actually for the side panel intake. Now, I'm no genius, but the space between the motherboard tray and the side panel is 26 millimeters, enough for a fan but the recess across the fan area for the filter reduces it to 22 millimeters, smaller than the thickness of your average fan, or most fans. So you either use the filter in the neat recess with some thin fans to the rear compartment, or move the filter to the rear compartment of the recess with normal fans in the main compartment. Not sure if this was fully thought through. I think I prefer the X90's approach to this if you're really looking to use the side as an intake. The side panels themselves are identical to the AX90's. Some basic thumb screws to the back and they pull off very easily. Nothing special to the rear, just your standard layout with a high top for radiator clearance. Also great for those with big hands when connecting things like the motherboard EPS power cable up to the top left if you have a CPU cooler installed. Anyway, up top there's a magnetically applied filter and the front I.O. which is the same as the AX90, sort of, including a power and reset buttons, a few USB Type-A ports with a mic and headphone combo jack, and there's a lighting button that leads through to the ARGB controller which controls all the included ARGB fans. Like so. Same as the AX90s, but we also get a Type-C connector which you don't get with the AX90. To the base, however, it's the same story as the X90. The same uber thin foam pads to the feet, the same positions for the 3.5 inch drive cage, and the same terrible power supply unit filter. As for the interior, also the main portion of the installation ease scoring, access panels and filters we've already covered, the motherboard and CPU cooler on the other hand, its scoring is great. No issues there at all. We even get the same standoff post as the X90, so aligning that board is nice and easy. The power splitting section is great. Uh, I'm not a massive fan of the very small foam supports. 
They're fine, but they're a lot easier to knock off if you're not careful with a heavy power supply in it. Uh, I'd also prefer to see either larger foam or some rubber. The drive areas are also pretty good. Not a massive fan of needing to remove the three and a half inch drive cage to add or remove drives down the line, but swapping between positions is good. And the two and a half inch drive mechanism is excellent with the little posts and grommets to the back of the motherboard tray. Unbeatable in my opinion. Onto the GPU section, like the AX90, it's disappointing. I can confirm there are no PCI Express slot replacement covers, which is heresy when you're providing a $100 plus case with snap-off covers. At minimum, you should provide a couple, at least, if not more, like so many cases, half the price of this do. Otherwise, outside of the obvious bashed up rear from the AIO, which isn't your typical out of the box X603, there aren't any other issues in my mind. And last but not least, cable management. Same as the X90, since it's the same chassis, great overall, but there aren't any grommets for cable management holes, something you'd expect in a case at this price. Like I said in the X90 review, if you don't care about that sort of stuff, there's no need to comment in the, in the comment sections below. Uh, you can get most of this, if not not all the features this case offers for nearly if not half the price. If you're paying this much you should be getting a fair share back in my opinion. Just touching on the lighting controller that I failed to cover well in the AX90 review, sorry about that, uh, it's a solid controller by itself. You can pass through to your motherboard with the universal style three pin connector to control the lights uh, or just use the top light switch button not connecting to a motherboard which gives you a good mix uh, of all the solid and breathing modes you'd expect in addition to the standard rainbow and other switching modes where they flip between colours and stuff. All in all the lighting is pretty decent. On to the performance, for one reason or another, these fans were very slightly louder than the AX90s. Is that because this case was sent from America? It's an American case, louder? Could be, uh, but it might also be the extra intake filter layer for the AX90, but where the AX90s produced 37 dBA at full speed, these ones went up to 38 dBA, which meant they were suitable for all testing, no need to swap them out for the test fans. By the way, 38 dBA it still isn't loud at all. Uh, overall, it's, it's pretty quiet at full speed and you can always turn it down, um, but I think this is running at 15% speed and you just can't hear it from here, so there we go. Note, I do say louder, uh, but not faster, uh, and that's because I couldn't get a solid reading out of these fans when I was running them at full speed, especially where I could with the AX90s. The NZXT grid was reading between 1000 and 2400 RPM, we're switching between the two every half a second or so. I expect they're, they're between 1000 and 1200 RPM fans, but they sounded very smooth during testing, so I'm, I'm not overly worried about the fans in general. It's worth noting, I didn't test the side fan position on this uh, since the chassis is the same as the X90s, uh, and I did the testing on that, and, and that spoke for itself. Uh, a bit better in the GPU temps, and worse on the CPU temps. Uh, the front intakes were better overall. But this isn't the AX90, it's the RAID MAX X603 with a better looking front panel assembly from a performance standpoint. It's just less filter stuff going on, so more airflow through. I also think it looks a bit better. So how well did it do? Well, at full speed, on average, to the temperature across the CPU and GPU temps throughout both tests, that's the 10 minutes of Primity 5 and Fermark for test 1, 3 runs, and Firestrike combined tests for 10 minutes is test 2, the X603 was nearly 2.5 degrees better off than the AX90, which is notable. If you really want to know the CPU temps for the full fan speed testing look like this, where things get weird in the lower half, that's where systems crash due to runaway temps, so... A uh, bit of a fail down there. And here are the GPU temperatures uh, where the RAID MAX does quite a lot better. As for the noise normalized testing, turning the X603's fans down a touch to hit the 37.5 dBA target at 40 centimeters from the front of the case, the X603 didn't do quite as well as the AX90. Now, the X90 had to cheat with the Noctua NF-F12 test fans to make more noise to meet the noise target since they didn't make 37 dBA with the stock fans. So three NF-F12s in the X90 versus four somethings in the X603, both producing 37.5 dBA, the X90 is about three degrees cooler on average. 
Breaking that down, the CPU was a lot cooler than the X90, but they were both very comparable on the GPU temperatures. Those dodgy results are uh, the, the crashy results in the Prime T5 and Fermark testing, so don't take too much uh, notice of those. So that other results, I'm not convinced those NF F12s aren't helping the AX90 uh, too much compared to the stock fans. I think they, on top of two faster intakes uh, being potentially better than three slower intakes, are giving the AX90 an unfair advantage. I'll have another think about how I handle extra noise requirements in the future. Otherwise, the thermal scores calculate to be basically a complete tie between the AX90 and the X603. I think the AX90 is a little worse off, but they'd still be neck and neck even if it was a few degrees hotter than the X603 in a couple of those tests. So the thermal score comes out to, roughly speaking, 58%. So both are all round better off than the O11 Dynamic Mini, but not quite as good as the P10C and the TD500 Mesh or anything ab above that. Spec score is strong in the X603, just slightly ahead of the AX90 with the extra 5mm of CPU cooler clearance that I think the AX90 could probably do too, if I'm being honest. So just the chassis with the most stuff packed into the case, it's 52% full, and including the included fan bonus score, it's got a total compatibility score of 64%. Build quality, again, we're lacking in the filters, although better than the AX90 with that awful front filter. Uh, the quality of the front panel mesh as, as a filter is far better, and not to mention more accessible. The packaging is also a lot nicer in the Raid Max, being closed cell foam, although that didn't stop the rear from being a bit smashed up, uh, although that's not exactly a stock setup. It's still getting a 7.5 out of 10 for packaging. So overall, that's 58% for the X603. And last but not least, least the installation ease scoring it's the same as the AX90 since everything operated the same although it's at the bottom the contour Helios being in the middle because it doesn't have filters to grade uh, the X603 and the AX90 aren't bad regarding installation ease both at 75% they're just not quite as good as some other cases but still great so getting into the final scores adding up all the previous scores puts the X603 a couple of positions above the AX90 as it excels in build quality compared to the AX90. Including any bonus or penalty points, the Raid Max X603 gets 20 bonus points for the included cooler. Joking, of course, uh, nothing to report for the X603. Uh, so it finishes with a final score of just over 60%, which is good, but quite a ways off great. That's not the end though, since the white X603 costs $10 more than the black one and the Antec AX90. When we go to the price versus score graph, it's doing worse than the Antec AX90. So let's wrap this up. Do I recommend the Raid Max X603? Well, as I said in the AX90 video, there's higher performing kit on the market around the same price and size, like the Lian Li Lankul 215 or the NZXT H510 Flow. If you're looking at this and those two, uh, but from my perspective, I would steer you towards those because they have the better performance, but they might not be available to you in your country or region, uh, or this might be on sale and, and much better price versus performance compared to those, or might not look like them or like this or them, uh, in which case I'd say uh, if you don't mind the downsides of this case and you love the look and the price is right for you, then get it. Sounds to me like it ticks all of your boxes, and at the end of the day, that's what really matters. So anyway, thanks for checking this one out. Like and subscribe for more. And feel free to join the Discord, the AV Techie Discord, to chat with me uh, and with all these lovely people. Or give me suggestions about anything there to do with videos, or watch a review, uh, or in the comments if you fancy. So thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.